on World News Tonight. Lying in state, Pope Benedict remembered with thousands visiting to pay his last respects. Recession warning, the IMF warns against a third of the world leading into recession this year. Lula's victory, Jair Bolsonaro lost his battle as Brazil's Lula da Silva was sworn in as president for the third term. And welcoming 2023. The world celebrated the dawning of a new year despite the hardships faced with flamboyant displays. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News tonight for the year 2023 and wishing you all a very happy new year. Our top story tonight is on the demise of former Pope Benedict, who in 2013 became the first pontiff in 600 years to step down. Pope Francis made a brief prayer to his predecessor during the service. The former pope will be available at St. Peter's Basilica for public viewing. Thousands are expected to come to pay their respects. A farewell to his cardinals before Pope Benedict XVI left the Vatican by helicopter and went into the history books. Not since the Middle Ages had a sitting pontiff resigned. Eight years earlier, his arrival had been heralded with the traditional white smoke above the Sistine Chapel, as four days of deliberation elected Pope Benedict, the first German to take the role in history. Abemus Papam. Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger was 78 when he succeeded his popular predecessor, John Paul II. Born in 1927 to a devout family in a small village in Bavaria, the future pontiff entered a seminary at the age of 12. However, the rise of Nazi Germany would cast a spectre over Ratzinger's religious vocation. He joined the Hitler Youth in 1941 and then the Wehrmacht two years later. The end of the war allowed him to return to his faith. He was ordained at the age of 24 and achieved renown as a professor of theology. In 1977, he was named a cardinal and the following year participated at the conclave that elected Pope John Paul II, who named him in turn at the head of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, the body responsible for defending Catholic values a job that would include cases involving moral offences and sexual abuse by church members. Over nearly 25 years, Ratzinger would be one of the closest collaborators of John Paul II. Once ordained, Pope Benedict carried on the work of his predecessor. He met with young people and continued dialogue with other religions with varying success, such as this speech in Regensburg in 2006. He quoted a 14th century Byzantine emperor, evoking a link between Islam and violence. Zeig mir doch, was Mohammed Neues gebracht hat. Und da wirst du, so sagt er, nur Schlechtes und Inhumanes finden. Wie dies, dass er vorgeschrieben hat, den Glauben, den er predigte, durch das Schwert zu verbreiten. It sparked outrage within the Muslim community and wasn't the only controversy the Pope would face. Revelations of paedophilia within the Catholic Church dogged John Paul II as well, but Benedict XVI lacked his predecessor's charisma, as his own brother acknowledged. Mit ihm kann man gut auskommen. Man könnte eine ganze Reihe von positiven Eigenschaften erwähnen. Unlike so many pontiffs, Pope Benedict would live to see the shape his successor, Pope Francis's mandate, would take one with a style radically different to his own. Now, a third of the global economy will be in recession this year. The head of the International Monetary Fund has warned. Kristalina Georgieva, International Monetary Fund Managing Director, said 2023 will be tougher than last year as the US, EU and China see their economies slow. The IMF head warns of a global economic recession. It comes as the war in Ukraine, rising prices, higher interest rates and the spread of COVID in China weigh on the global economy. The IMF cut its outlook for global economic growth in 2023 in October. Since then, China has scrapped its zero-COVID policy and started to reopen its economy, even as coronavirus infections have spread rapidly in the country. IMF head Kristalina warned that China, the world's second largest economy, would face a difficult 
start to 2023. George Eva's comments will be alarming for people around the world, not least in Asia, which endured a difficult year in 2022. Figures released over the weekend pointed to weakness in the Chinese economy at the end of 2022. The official purchasing managers index for December showed that China's factory activity shrank for the third month in a row and at the fastest rate in the almost three years as coronavirus infections spread in the country's factories. On Saturday, in his first public comments since the change in policy, President Xi Jinping called for more effort and unity as China enters what he called a new phase. The downturn in the United States also means that there is less demand for the products that are made in China and other Asian countries, including Thailand and Vietnam. Higher interest rates also make borrowing more expensive. So for both these reasons, companies may choose not to invest in expanding their businesses. The lack of growth can trigger investors to pull money out of the country and so countries, especially poorer ones, have less cash to pay for crucial imports like food and energy. In these kinds of slowdowns, currencies can lose their value against those of more prosperous economies compounding the issue. The impact of the higher interest rates on loans affected economies at the government level too, especially emerging markets which may struggle to repay their debts. For decades, the Asia-Pacific region has depended on China as a major trading partner and for economic support in times of crisis. Now Asian economies are facing the last economic effects of how China has handled the pandemic. Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva took office for a third term as Brazil's president, vowing to fight for the poor and the environment and rebuild the country after far-right leader Jair Bolsonaro's divisive administration. Brazilian leftist Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva was sworn into the presidency on Monday, completing a stunning comeback to assume office of a divided country and deliver a searing indictment of far-right Jair Bolsonaro, the incumbent who lost to Lula in October. Lula won just three months after he left prison, he had been charged with corruption, and more than a decade after his first two terms in power. He's vowed a drastic change for a Brazil plagued by hunger, poverty and racism. And in a speech to Congress after he officially took the reins, he made a veiled threat towards his predecessor without mentioning Bolsonaro by name. We do not carry any spirit of revenge against those who tried to subjugate the nation to their personal and ideological purposes, he said. But we will guarantee the rule of law. Those who made mistakes will answer for their mistakes. Bolsonaro rattled Brazil's young democracy with baseless claims of electoral weakness that spawned a violent movement of election deniers, some of which have camped out in front of army barracks and called for a military coup. Bolsonaro left for the United States on Friday after refusing to concede defeat. Without presidential immunity, he now faces mounting legal risks for his anti-democratic rhetoric and handling of the pandemic. Lula said Bolsonaro committed, quote, genocide by failing to respond to the COVID-19 virus properly. However, his trip to Florida in the U.S. insulates him from any immediate legal peril. On Monday, after the new president was sworn in, he drove in a Rolls Royce to the presidential palace, where he walked up the ramp with a diverse group, a black child, a disabled man, and the chief of the Kayapo tribe. He was handed the presidential sash by Aline Souza, a black garbage collector. The sash handover is a hugely symbolic act in Brazil, and Bolsonaro said he would never do it for Lula. The new president wiped away tears during a subsequent speech. It's time to reconnect with friends and family. The tie is broken by hate speech and the spread of so many lies, he said. No more hate, fake news, guns and bombs. Our people want peace to work, study, take care of the family and be happy. In his first decisions as president, Lula restored the power of Brazil's Environmental Protection Agency to fight illegal deforestation, which had been weakened under Bolsonaro. He also revoked the former president's looser gun policies, which saw gun ownership soar in Brazil. Meanwhile, Australia said that travelers from China will have to provide a negative COVID-19 test result from January 5th, joining a growing number of nations that have implemented similar restrictions as cases surge in China. 
Citing a lack of epidemiological information and genomic sequencing data from China, Australian Health Minister Mark Butler said that the government has decided out of an abundance of caution to require visitors to present a negative test taken within 48 hours for their departure. The requirement will also apply to visitors from Hong Kong and Macau. The government is also considering additional measures including testing wastewater from airplanes and voluntary sampling at airports for arrivals. Since China relaxed strict measures to stop the spread of the coronavirus, the country has experienced a surge of cases, overwhelming hospitals and prompting countries including the United States, India and Japan to impose restrictions on travellers from the mainland. Australia's Health Minister Mark Butler said his decision was taken out of an abundance of caution and a temporary measure due to concerns about a lack of detailed information about the epidemiological situation in China. Butler also said universities and the tourist industry will also welcome the resumption of travel from China, as would people who have long been separated from their families and friends. The requirements will come into effect from Thursday, ahead of the expected lifting of Chinese travel restrictions on January 8th. During a meeting with Chinese officials, the World Health Organization called on China to regularly share specific and real-time data on its epidemiological situation. Australia and China recently resumed diplomatic dialogue after relations between the countries had a low point following criticism by Australia of China. China's handling of COVID-19. In 2020, China imposed trade sanctions on several major Australian exports. Thousands of exhausted passengers remain stranded outside the aging Ninoy Aquino International Airport in Manila after a New Year power outage caused hundreds of flight cancellations. Passengers stated that in 24 hours that they have been waiting. They have become very exhausted from lack of sleep. With bodies aching from all the waiting, stranded passengers find random corners in order to rest. Long queues were seen forming at crowded airport terminals by passengers waiting to rebook their flights. Caesar Chong, general manager of the Manila International Airport Authority, said the airport was handling a maximum of 15 arrivals per hour compared to 20 during normal operations. The outage was the result of the unprecedented failure of both primary and secondary power supplies, he said, adding it will take around 72 hours for airlines to normalize their operations. About 65,000 passengers were affected after 361 flights were either delayed, cancelled or diverted to other regional airports, while numerous other flights were forced to reroute to avoid Philippine airspace. Flag carrier Philippine Airlines said that it was arranging recovery flights out of the United States, Singapore and Malaysia and diverting some flights to domestic airports. Budget carrier Cebu Pacific cancelled 54 domestic flights today. The Ninoy Aquino International Airport has previously been ranked among the world's worst international gateways. With flight delays a regular occurrence and a history of upgrades being delayed or abandoned due to disputes between the airport and contractors. Let's go in for a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. Welcome back to World News Tonight. Vladimir Putin has framed the war in Ukraine as a near existential battle for Russia's future amid New Year's Eve missile strikes on the Ukrainian capital. A ceasefire, the Russian war against Ukraine can be expected during 2023 and even as early as mid-year, a former German army and NATO general said. Air raid sirens sounded in Kyiv night as the latest wave of drone and missile strikes from Russia continued. An attack which began shortly before midnight targeted critical infrastructure, Kyiv regional governor Olensky Kuleba said. Out of the injured, 14 were hospitalized, while six of the others were provided with medical assistance on the spot. Two of them were reported dead. The attacks have been continued for several days over the New Year's period. Meanwhile, the Ukrainian armed forces said that 400 Russian soldiers had been killed on New Year's Eve in Makivka in the Russian-occupied Donetsk region. In a rare move, pro-Russian authorities admitted to casualties, but Russia refused to confirm the number of deaths. Zelensky congratulated Ukrainian forces for shooting down 45 Iranian-made Shahad drones launched by Russia on the first night of the year. It comes after Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky wished for a victorious and a return to normal for Ukraine in 2023. In a New Year's address, President Vladimir Putin said Russia would fight to protest its sovereignty and independence. Russia has been targeting Ukraine's energy infrastructure for several months, destroying power stations and plunging millions into darkness during the country's freezing winter. 
North Korea fired short-range ballistic missiles into the East Sea again. It comes after Seoul successfully conducted a test flight of a solid fuel space vehicle. New convoys of South Korea, the US and Japan denounced the regime's launch and decided to increase talks with China to deter the North's further provocations. There has been an unprecedented number of missile tests from North Korea this year, and it fired yet another round of ballistic missiles at the end of the year. South Korea's Joint Chief of Staff said that the regime launched three short-range ballistic missiles, or SRBMs, into the East Sea from North Hwangedo province, just south of the capital Pyongyang from 8 a.m. local time. It's the first missile launched by the North in eight days when it fired two SRBMs, and also comes five days after Seoul accused Pyongyang of flying drones into South Korea's airspace. South Korea's JCS announced that the missile traveled about 350 kilometers. Meanwhile, according to Japan's Ministry of Defense, the missile reached a height of 100 kilometers. After the launch, top nuclear envoys of South Korea, the U.S. and Japan denounced the regime's latest SRBM launch. Seoul's Special Representative for Korean Peninsula Peace and Security Affairs, Kim Gon, spoke on the phone with his American counterpart, Sung Kim, and Japanese counterpart, Takehiro Funakoshi. All three officials vowed to respond firmly to provocations from Pyongyang and continue with their trilateral security cooperation against North Korea next year. They also agreed to increase communication with China as it plays an important role in deterring North Korea's provocations. Meanwhile, the Saturday launch conducted by the regime came hours after South Korea's test flight of a solid fuel space launch vehicle. It was successfully conducted at around 6.50 p.m. on Friday local time, which is nine months after the homegrown rocket's first test. After the flight, South Korea's defense ministry said this was a follow-up to the first test in March and that more will be carried out in the coming years. Now, the Palestinians welcomed a vote by the United Nations General Assembly requesting that the International Court of Justice, or ICJ, provide an opinion on the legal consequences of Israel's occupation of the Palestinian territories. Israel condemned and the Palestinians welcomed on Saturday a United Nations vote over Israel's occupation of the Palestinian territories. Draft Resolution 1 is adopted. The General Assembly passed a resolution on Friday to ask the International Court of Justice for an opinion on the legal consequences of the, quote, occupation, settlement and annexation, including measures aimed at altering the demographic composition, character and status of the holy city of Jerusalem. <laughs> Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Saturday called the vote despicable. He said the Israeli people are not occupiers and would not be bound by the resolution. The vote presents a challenge for Netanyahu, who took office this week as the head of a new hard-right government that has made settlement expansion and annexation a priority. Palestinian officials hailed the vote as a victory Saturday. A spokesman for Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas said the time has come for Israel to be a state subject to law. Along with Gaza and East Jerusalem, the Palestinians seek the occupied West Bank for a state. Most countries consider Israel's settlements there illegal, a view Israel disputes, citing historical and biblical ties to the land. The Hague-based International Court of Justice is the top UN court dealing with disputes between states. Its rulings are binding, but it has no power to enforce them. We have some good news for you. Anxiety disorders can ruin a person's quality of life, but because of the exact source of the symptom has been unknown, they were difficult to treat. A research team has discovered that the specific brain cells that control anxiety opening the doors to new anxiety treatments. Various treatments for anxiety disorders are tested on laboratory mice. This is a cross maze that's 30 centimeters high and just 5 centimeters wide. Put in this tight space, the lab mouse feels anxious, tenses up and doesn't move. This time the mouse has a fiber optic attached to its head that shines a blue light. After a few minutes, the mouse starts moving around. The blue light stimulates certain brain cells which helps the mouse overcome the extreme anxiety. Researchers planted part of a thin optic cable into the skull of the mouse, which allowed the blue light to hit its brain directly, and the light stimulated the specific brain cells related to anxiety. Until now, studies on anxiety disorders have been focused on the nerve cells in the brain, 
But researchers have found new evidence in a different kind of brain cell called astrocytes, star-shaped glial cells in the brain and spinal cord. Some 30 percent of adults may experience an anxiety disorder at some point, but there isn't a clear-cut treatment yet. By identifying a new cause of anxiety, this latest research could provide a new lead for the development of treatments. This latest discovery gives hope for those who have experienced anxiety disorders. The research has been published in the international scientific journal Nature Communications. Welcome back to World News Tonight and for more news let's take you around the world in a minute. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and China's new Foreign Minister Qin Yang discussed Washington-Beijing relations over the phone. Referring to the conversation on Twitter afterwards, Blinken said the two had addressed maintaining open lines of communication during the call. The coffin of Brazilian soccer legend Pele arrived at a stadium in Santos ahead of a wake. The convoy carrying the coffin from the Sao Paulo hospital where Pele died on Thursday was met with fireworks and crowds as it made its way towards the stadium before dawn. Four people died and three others were in critical condition when two helicopters collided mid-flight near a popular tourist attraction on Australia's Gold Coast. A death toll in India's Kashmir rose to five after a blast which took place after a suspected militant attack in the hill town of Rajouri, where a child was killed. At least ten people were injured in the attack and were admitted to a hospital, of whom three were announced dead when they were brought in, while another lost his life later. After heavy rains flooded roads in the northern California city of Placerville, its residents woke up to a landscape of mud and debris. The county of El Dorado has placed evacuation warnings on several locations due to flooding. And that is all from us here at World News Tonight. Join us again tomorrow as we keep you up to date with the latest from around the world. In case you missed any of the stories tonight, you can watch the whole program on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash other than English. The dawning of the new year was celebrated with displays of fireworks that illuminated the sky in hope for a peaceful year ahead. We leave you tonight with the flamboyant burst of color in the night sky. Thank you for watching. Have a great night.